coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, I'm adding Asian flavors to my fish and game. Also, I've got Susie Jimenez, Jeff's calling ducks, Melissa's talking deer health, C-Dub's making chili, and Buddy's cooking Cajun in Mexico. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, the sporting chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. So I really like Asian flavors, whether it's with fish and game or domestic meats. I don't like to overpower my food, but I like the flavors of Asian um, soy sauce, pickled ginger. I'm a big, big, big fan of fish that's not cooked, sashimi, which shouldn't surprise people that watch the show because I don't cook the stuff that should be cooked all that much anyway. The critical component for cooking any kind of Asian stuff, stir fry, fast cooking stuff, is to have all your ingredients chopped and on deck. It moves really fast. This is fast and hot cooking when you're doing a stir fry, for instance. So if all of a sudden in the middle of it you have to chop some onions, you're going to end up overcooking something. Your vegetables aren't going to be crisp. Your meat's going to be overcooked. Today I've got three Asian-inspired recipes. And they may not be authentic Asian recipes, but they're my take using Asian flavors. First is a Korean bulgogi that I'm doing with venison. Soy sauce, sesame oil, it's kind of sweet in there also, so it's got some brown sugar. It's a good marinade, especially if you have a stronger tasting animal, like perhaps a rangy antelope, or sea ducks that require a little help, a little bit more marinade. I also have a foil-wrapped pheasant. Foil-wrapped chicken is a pretty typical Asian dish that you kind of half cook the chicken, if it's a chicken dish. It's got some sauce in there, it's foil-wrapped, and then it's gonna be deep-fried in a Weston fryer. And finally, I have wasabi salmon balls. And no, that's not a medical condition. It's a spicy uh, use of some leftover salmon. I'm using smoked salmon in this case. I'm gonna get to all of that right here on the show, but first I want you to check out Susie Jimenez, one of my favorite Latina chefs who has risotto cakes. Chef Scott, sometimes we have a hard time creating this starch that's gonna go with our wild game, right? So I'm creating some risotto cakes. And when you get a box of risotto, follow the directions. I mean, you're cooking it. Risotto is like a, a pasta rice, so it takes a lot of time and patience, but it's got a lot of starch, so you'll see that you can form great uh, little cakes like this. Now, honestly, I did put an egg in there to bind it very well, but once you get the toppings on this, you're gonna love it. So we're gonna sear them with a little olive oil on medium high heat until they're golden brown, flip them over once, and they should be ready to go. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and work with this wild turkey drumstick. Now, these wild turkey drumsticks like are very, very tough, so you gotta break them down a lot. I placed mine in duck fat and put it in the oven and cooked it for about four to five hours, and now you'll see how tender it is. So you're just gonna grab this leg and you're just gonna pull all this meat off of there. And what we're trying to do is just saute this. You'll notice too that the wild turkey like drumstick, it's like pink in the inside, don't be discouraged by that. It does not mean that it's not cooked. That is the color of wild game. Sometimes you have to be a little, uh, you know, you gotta adjust a little bit, because even elk is better than like beef, you know? So don't get discouraged. You cooked it for five hours, it's done. The simplicity of this is I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, and then I made a mint cilantro chutney. Now, I tend to use a lot of cilantro, but sometimes it needs to be powered by something that's a little more refreshing. So I added one bunch of cilantro, one bunch of mint, one jalapeno lime in a blender with some salt and pepper, and I blended it up. Once you get the risotto cake so they're nice and golden brown and they've heated up, they're ready to be served, okay? Put the risotto cake right at the bottom, turkey confit on top of there, and then you're gonna get your mint cilantro chutney or it right on top. 
Now remember, you don't have to just use turkey, you can use duck, you can use rabbit, elk, whatever. The whole point is you get the starch at the bottom right so that you can start adding a little different spices to your dishes every day. So thank you so much for the awesome tip of the day on how to use starch on your everyday wild game meats. You can find out more about Susie on her Facebook page. Stay with her, like her, we love her. I like rice. And if you're going to be cooking Asian food, rice seems like a very natural to go with it. Now, if you're in a hurry, sometimes making rice doesn't seem like something that you're going to have time for. When I make a big batch of rice, what I like to do is put it up in a food saver, game saver unit here. But the most important part is that your rice comes from the USA. Make sure that your rice says grown in the USA. Make sure it's grown in America, raised in America, made in America. Let's support us, not them. You might think if you put rice in a vacuum packing unit, in a game saver unit like this, and you squeeze it too much, it's going to be a little bit too compressed, especially if your rice is overcooked. True that. I've learned that. What I like to do when I do take rice is I like to leave a little bit of room in it. Don't feel like whenever you use a game saver that you have to squeeze the life out of everything. What it does is it seals it. And once you put it in this bag and you seal it, stop it before it gets all the way there. And so it'll leave a little air space in there. When you want to have rice, you drop it into boiling water. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying it already pre-made. You can make it taste better because you're making it yourself. We're just getting started with the Asian thing. And there's also a calling tip. Melissa Bachman, C-Dub, and Buddy. I'd highly recommend a cold Japanese beer, and I'll meet you back here in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath, and friends of mine who watch the show say that I do this a lot. Devin, is this me? Apparently, yes. Venison bulgogi that Korean marinated venison that you can use actually with any kind of dark fleshed game meat. It's got a lot of flavor. I've got some already done here. This is venison hindquarter. You can tell how tender it is. So if your venison hindquarter is not tender like this, what happened? You probably overcooked it. I've got garlic, brown sugar, Brown sugar is going to obviously give it some sweetness. Sesame seeds you can add at the end or in the beginning, doesn't matter. Here's some crushed black pepper, green onions, pickled or fresh ginger, a little bit of sesame oil, and a little bit of sesame oil goes a long way. This is low sodium soy sauce. Leave this in here for at least six hours. We want this to have a lot of flavor. I have some right here. I'm going to put it over here on this Camp Chef stove in a cast iron skillet. You can use a wok if you happen to have that at home. And while I'm getting that ready, I want you to check out Jeff Smith, who's got a calling tip. Big question I get is, Jeff, how do you do a feeding call? And what I like to do is just say, tit, 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 tit. And I like to cup my hand down real tight to get some back pressure. I don't do a traditional rolling feed, which is ticka, 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 ticka. So by just saying tit, 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 and then putting a, a single hint in there, it's very, very realistic. And what I like to do is just basically throw that in my routine when I'm calling out a duck and just basically fill it. So I want to keep a duck's attention. If it's on the corner and coming in, the last you know, 50 uh, yards is cupped up. I'm just going to cluck at it. Okay. With a rolling feed chatter, you typically hear ducks doing that when they're flying. And a rolling feed chatter is ticka, 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 or dooga, 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 dooga. Jeff Smith is a very important part of the California Waterfowl Association. I've got the marinated bulgogi venison that's going to go into the hot skillet. This is only going to cook for a minute or two. Just enough to get it lightly browned on the outside and still very, very tender. And now some greens, kale, spinach, 
I added greens and shiitake mushrooms, and I got the bulgogi out of the pan. Now quickly into the pheasant, foil wrapped pheasant. Little pheasant breast, don't need the leg, the wing. I'm gonna cut this into small pieces, depending on how much you wanna put into your foil wrapped little pheasant package here. There's the pheasant. Over here is the sauce. I've got some oil in the skillet. I've got garlic and ginger, and that's gonna go quickly because I do not wanna burn my garlic or ginger. Pheasant pieces, just wanna get them a little bit brown because they're gonna deep fry once I wrap them in foil. I want them to be lightly browned, but still not all the way cooked through. Soy sauce. Green onions. A little bit of hoisin. And some chili garlic sauce. Take it off the heat and let it cool. You know, one of the things that people ask me about is, is venison safe to eat? Are ducks safe to eat? Well, given the option, I would much rather have a duck that's flown back and forth from Canada a couple of times as opposed to a six-week-old chicken in the grocery store. We don't shoot three-legged deer with mange. We shoot healthy animals. And nobody knows the importance of having a healthy deer population more than Melissa Bachman. And she's got a tip on how to have healthier deer in your own deer lease. If you live in a state where attractants are legal, one thing you may want to think about is using those attractants paired with your cutting bags. Now in this situation, I've got a cutting back on the tree. It's probably about eight, nine feet away from where I'm at. And what I like about this location is deer are already naturally coming through here. I have two trails right behind me that intersect, so I've got this only a couple feet off those trails. Now what I'm using today, I've got the Analogix, the Bragan Wright's acorn attractant. Now as a hunter, we all know that whitetails, they love acorns. So with this attractant, it's really a grain-based type of attractant, and like all their quality products, it contains Anashield TX4, which is a deer concentrated power pack to promote good health. If you've got strong, healthy deer, you're gonna have bigger deer, which equals more meat, and you're also gonna have bigger racks. So, not only will the smell draw them in, but once they eat it, they will keep coming back for more. So not only are you giving them something that's gonna taste good, but it's really good for them too. So I'm gonna put the rest of this here, and then I'm gonna head off hunting, and hopefully I'll get some nice pictures of some big bucks in here. I'm gonna finish up the foil wrapped pheasant and then get to work on the salmon wasabi balls. C-Dub's got chili and buddies in Mazatlan. Up next, right here. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath. I have three Asian-inspired dishes today. Did the venison bulgogi. This is the foil-wrapped pheasant breast. I've taken the, the pheasant, it's been sauced, it hasn't been cooked all the way through, it's been cooled. Take a square of foil, place pheasant that already has the sauce in it, in the square, fold it over into a triangle, seal both sides, and this part might seem a little odd to you. I've got a bunch of these already made. It's going in the Weston deep fryer. Only takes a couple of minutes. These are gonna drain. I've got one more recipe, wasabi salmon balls, but here's C-Dub with some Texas chili. Scott, one of my all-time favorite meals in camp is cornbread and chili. And we're gonna do something with our chili that's a little different. We're gonna just show you the difference between Yankee chili and the way a Texan makes chili down there without beans. So we want to get our cornbread started first and we're going to do that in a 12 inch Dutch oven on our stove and we're going to use the dome. We don't have to fire up any charcoal. All my dry ingredients are in here. This is just C. Deb's version of the cornbread mix that you uh, buy in the store. I'm going to take this out of my food saver bag and give it a stir in case we have our dry ingredients all mixed up. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to take two eggs here. I'm one of these guys that don't like to do a lot of dishes, so I need about two tablespoons of oil. Our buttermilk is acidic, our uh, baking powder, our baking soda are both bases, so that chemical reaction gives us a little more lip. Come in here with about two cups of buttermilk. Here again, we're using our, our Dutch oven dome. Our uh, Dutch oven is sitting on the diffuser plates, which is on the burner, and they're going. Okay, so we're gonna just take our wet ingredients, mix them in here with our cornmeal. Our cornbread's ready to go. We're gonna get our lid on and we're just gonna bake it stove top here. Get our Dutch oven dome on. To go with our cornbread that we've already got started, let's make some genuine Texas chili. We have a Dutch oven going here and our oil's hot. And here I have some uh, coarse ground elk burger. While we're browning our meat, let's go ahead and get some of our other ingredients in there. And we're gonna take and start with some garlic. And then we have some onions here. And we're gonna get this and we're gonna brown this all together. And we're gonna start with a little bit of Mexican oregano. And I just use, oh, about that much. We're gonna add just a little bit of cayenne pepper, cumin. And it gives that, that, that very distinct Southwest flavor. So let's just start adding some liquid. And I'm gonna start here with just a little bit of water. Okay, we're gonna add just a 12 ounce can of tomato juice. Now we're gonna add about a quarter cup of uh, chili powder. And we're going to add some tomato sauce. Okay, now this is starting to look good. Tomato paste. We're gonna get our tomato paste pretty well stirred into there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more water and we're going to let this simmer for a few minutes. There you go, chili and cornbread for supper tonight. All right, this is gonna go fast. Pay close attention. I have cooked salmon. This was smoked salmon, ran it through a food processor. It's dump and go time. Green onions, pickled ginger, sesame oil, lime juice, crunchy water chestnuts, a little corn starch to help bind it, one egg, wasabi powder, mix, cold water, an egg, salmon wasabi balls, into the egg mixture, this is panko and sesame seeds. Into the Weston Fryer. Time's up. Here's Buddy. Uh, we're down here in Mazatlan, New Mexico, being hosted by El Cid. A bit of butter and rice. I'm just gonna make this dish unusual is the use of the sauce pico de gallo that they make here. I'm gonna liven up that rice. There. Now we'll get on to making that to pay. This is the South Louisiana, East Texas route. You know, I might have crammed too much into today's show, but I have complete confidence that our editors will make it work. Right, guys? Come on back for the big food shot.
Welcome back to the Sporting Chef Bulgogi Venison right here. Lots of flavor. Um, one of the camera guys at uh, during the break, he started eating it and went, wow, and it is good. Here's the crispy, crunchy salmon wasabi balls. Crunchy on the outside, salmony on the inside. The foil wrapped pheasant. When you serve it, people just unwrap it thusly. And on the inside, you have the delicious marinated pheasant already in its own sauce. And since the salmon balls are a little bit spicy with the wasabi, I have some chili sauce that I'm going to dunk it in. I guess that's it. A big thanks today to everybody that was on the show. Susie, Jeff, Melissa, C-Dub, and Buddy. And as always, I want you to thank our sponsors that make it possible for me to invade your kitchens, your living rooms, your wherever it is you watch this every day. And if I do this a lot, well, you know it's me. I'm Scott Layseth, the Sporting Chef, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>